Welcome back to the Realm of Unpopular Opinions, and today we will be starting a new Star Wars vlog, which you can tell by the title. So, Attack of the Clones. We are finally actually reading this. I read Phantom Menace like three months ago, which is an embarrassment at this point, but I had a bit of a runt in my Star Wars books. This year, I think I read like a Star Wars book every month, and I took a little bit of a break. But I'm back in a Star Wars mood, I need to consume something, and I'm very happy to be back. Although, I know I will be heartbroken starting now, which is why I've been putting it off. I even have the Clone Wars audiobook, so we might actually read that as well in the meantime. But, Attack of the Clones <laughs> is gonna kill me, but not as much as Revenge of the Sith. So, I think Revenge of the Sith will be the longest vlog, and expect that soon, but for now... We'll be doing Attack of the Clones full spoilers in case you didn't watch the first vlog. I might be reading something out. I will comment on everything, but I mean, at this point, if you don't know what Attack of the Clones is about, then you don't care about Star Wars. So <laughs> welcome to the video anyway, and let's have fun. I really love doing these, and I think they turn out pretty cool because Star Wars is something I love with all my heart, so I think you can tell, <laughs> I think, in the content that it's better than when I'm just testing out books that I know nothing about. So, long intro done, let's just get into this. I don't need to take up more of your time of just rambling. We are already, I feel like I want to cry, I'm on page six. The beginning with Anakin and the image, that was already heartbreaking enough. But I knew, this is why I was so reluctant, because you see in uh, the Attack of the Clones book, you get Shmi's chapters and what she's doing on Tatooine and if that isn't enough to kill you I don't know what will <laughs> because a beautiful mystery in the movies is you that you believe she was happy and you don't know what happened to her when she was taken by the Tuscans you get all of that in the book which is context I absolutely did not need unless I wanted to feel even more depressed so and that already in the beginning we have established the fact that Anakin can confide in Palpatine like he can't even in Obi-Wan because Palpatine is not the Jedi and he's supportive and he bolsters him and grows his confidence and feeds his ego which we know but of course he's a source of comfort when he can't tell the Jedi exactly that he's attached because that's a fault so it's understandable why he's being pushed into Palpatine's grasp but it's just it's so heartbreaking when you know what happens <laughs> and the Shmi thing I'm just reading her chapters now and I can't I I'm not sure if I'm emotionally strong enough right now to read Shmi's chapters because because I remember them I remember they killed me the first time they're gonna kill me even more this time I didn't need this context I truly didn't I could have remained in beautiful ignorance about what happens to her while she's on Tatooine. It just makes it worse, Honest, honestly. If you're someone who's really not sure about the depth of the prequels, just read read the books. R read the books and you're going to see everything in a new light, believe me. And if it wasn't heartbreaking enough for you, I forgot Owen's here too. Owen, who you never actually get depth for. Owen, Lars. Luke's uncle, although he could actually be uncle now, technically. <laughs> how he talks to Shmi and how he supports her and loves her and he's been hearing about Anakin for the last 10 years and about how great he is and of course he would be the perfect person actually to care for Luke. It's not like they dumped him with random people. They would be the perfect people to care for Luke. They're simple, but they're good, and they're kind, and they loved the Skywalkers, and Luke truly could not have been with better family. I know Leia was adopted as a princess, and everyone's like, yeah, let's send Luke to just a random desert planet, but he was... He was with such kind, kind people. Owen is precious, and I'm so happy that they gave Luke to him. I agree that he was a bit mean to Obi-Wan, but also understandably so. Probably after hearing so much about Anakin and then hearing about the disasters that happened, he would want to protect Luke from everything as well, so. I understand, and I love him. 
I, <laughs> I, I genuinely think it was great that Luke ends up with his family. We're just on, it's still a Shmi chapter, but she's talking to Kleeg and she's like, you think that Anakin and Owen would be friends, Kleeg asked? <laughs> of course they would. You never met my Annie, Shmi scolded. They'd be the best of friends, Kleeg assured her. They're going to meet, but Owen would not only be appreciative of Anakin, he would take care of his son for 20 years and love him and care for him and fear for him. Could you imagine a love more <laughs> beautiful than that? See, here I am already breaking down. It's been not even 20 pages. This is going to be a roller coaster and it is still nothing compared to Revenge of the Sith. So... God damn it. <laughs> I need to stop talking because otherwise this video is going to be like an hour long. The irony of Padme asking her sister, is everyone to be defined by their children? When pretty much people only acknowledge her as the mother of Luke and Leia. So it's kind of ironic and I love that. But also I have no idea why Salvatore is using the word sis. It's very much out of place. It's a little weird, but... <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is Padme's sister, but do we need context for everyone? Like, <laughs> the only characters that are developed in the movie are, like, the main ones. But here you get development for everyone, like, for everyone. I don't even watch the movies the same way. Like, I'm pretty sure Padme's sister is only in the deleted scene, but now I actually feel for her as well. And I think that's wonderful. I think it feels like an entire unit that makes up Attack of the Clones. Also, just a random comment, but let's not forget that R2-D2 was originally Padme's, Padme's astromech droid. He was originally Padme's, so he is not technically a Skywalker droid, he is an Amidala droid, so, or an Uberi. Anyway, let's just stand the fact that R2-D2 was definitely Padme's first, and we love that. We love to see it. I don't remember the details of this so much. That is going to be fun. I just remember that I adored it. Honestly, I think we are all sleeping on Padme Amidala. The queen, literally, has been an icon since she was literally a teenager. She's 25 now, I think. 25, 24-ish. And she literally starts talking in the Senate and everyone knows her voice. She is an icon and I think she does not get enough credit in Star Wars. I My love for Padme just grew exponentially after I got into it and read the books. She is a force to be reckoned with. And if you've watched the Clone Wars as well, like she has power. And she wasn't even 30 when she died. Like we stand Padme actually and I adore her. I absolutely adore her. They literally start cheering when they learn she's live. Of course, we stand, Padme. Direction I never knew I needed. And if you didn't believe me, the books are literally nothing like the movies, but everyone moved to exchange pleasant greetings and Yoda pointedly tapped Padme with his small cane. I'm imagining Yoda tapping Padme with a cane. With you, the force is strong, young senator. Dare I say it, not all the Force power came from Anakin. The Jedi Master told her, Your tragedy on the landing platform, terrible. To see you alive brings warm feelings to my heart. Yoda and Padme, just like, yes, absolutely, yes. Give me more of this. I am living. <laughs> the fact that, I mean... Master Yoda tapped his cane, drawing attention to himself, and that alone exerted a calming influence over the increasing intense mood. Yoda is calming? And, I mean, I'm, I'm loving this. Like, this is the golden age of the Jedi, and if you want to tell me that anything is better than this in the Star Wars universe, the golden age of the Jedi, then we can't have a conversation, honestly. We can't, because nothing beats this, and seeing how they worked, and why they failed, and why they were good, and I, I love it. I, I, I love it so much. <laughs> And the fact that Clone Wars came between this and Revenge of the Sith, the best movies, yes, absolutely. Thank you very much, George.
I love you with all my heart. This is like laced with hints and I absolutely love how beautifully crafted it is. But now they're leaving and Yoda's like, accept our help, you don't care enough about yourself. They all left the room and Padme Amidala stared at the door and the flanking guards for a long while. Behind her, at the back of his office, Chancellor Palpatine watched them all. Like the detail of that. Just a small comment, but Chancellor Palpatine watched them all. It reminds me of an edit that I saw, like, for Clone Wars, everybody wants to rule the world, and in the end, it's Palpatine. <laughs> Just very fitting. Very, very fitting. I know everyone says Darth Vader is the best villain ever, but I disagree. I think it's Palpatine. The absolute genius of this man, he's the best villain ever. No argument there. <laughs> Definitely no, no argument. Everyone says Darth Vader because he's the coolest, and I mean, he is the main character, but I wouldn't really consider him a proper villain because his whole arc is about him not being a villain so Palpatine can fill that spot easily. Small moment but now Anakin and Padme are reunited and they're both assessing each other and like getting their bearings and she's like <laughs> she looked down and then followed the line of his lean body tilting her head back to emphasize his height and he realized that he now towered over her. I'm sorry about we stand couples with a height difference that's just the most attractive thing ever. And you know in the movies how she's literally so, so much smaller than him. I love it. I love it so much. This is probably the last book that's not completely depressing. <laughs> so I should enjoy it while I actually can. And I realize I already have a lot of footage and I'm only on page 64. This is just flying by. I can't stop reading this. I mean, it's clear, but there's a moment where Obi-Wan's like... You're focusing on the negative again, he said to Anakin. Be mindful of your thoughts. She was pleased to see us. Leave it at that. He's like, I understand. Obi-Wan knows from the beginning that it's more difficult for Anakin and he's doing his best for him. Probably he was at his wit's end when he was even more of a teenager than he is now. But Obi-Wan is literally like, yeah, she was pleased to see us, Anakin. I get it. I you miss your mother, so you missed Padme. I'm going to let you have it, but please focus on the task at hand. And we love, we love Anakin and Obi-Wan. Just thinking about them already makes me cry. I might link my two favorite edits of Anakin and Obi-Wan in the description, if I remember. <laughs> you can remind me if I didn't remember, but they're really sad, just a fair warning. One of them, I didn't even expect I would cry. I just played it and I cried. I solidly cried at the ending, so. But they're really, really beautifully edited. So if you're in the mood, do ask me to link them somewhere maybe I remember I'll see but off topic completely I'm probably gonna get to a page 100 and then stop for the night literally as I am recording this I went on Instagram and found out it's official Hayden is coming back for Star Wars Hayden and Ewan are literally my my childhood I'm not gonna cry I'm just very very emotional right now Hayden is clearly returning as Darth Vader and potentially, potentially, a flashback. <laughs> you could see him in the Clone Wars armor, you never know, but as Darth Vader. Anyway, Hayden is coming back, like, thank you, thank you so much. I care nothing for Disney Star Wars, they can burn in hell. But at least you're bringing Hayden and you and finally back together. The little tit, what they did to Hayden in the sequel trilogy was an absolute disgrace. So go, go Hayden for the fact that you actually decided to return. I love you so much and thank you. But him and Ewan in an Obi-Wan Kenobi series 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. I don't see how this could be bad. Please don't mess it up. It's such a simple template. We just need to see how Obi-Wan's living. We need to see little baby Luke, maybe some glimpses of Leia and Darth Vader badass scenes. I don't possibly see how you can mess this up. So please don't. Please don't. It couldn't possibly be simpler. And you have so much emotion you can draw on with Hayden and Ewan. Because that is literally the most emotional part in all of Star Wars. Please don't mess it up. You can't mess it up. I can't think right now of a way that it could be bad, but I'm sure that Disney will find it <laughs> somehow. I mean, I hope not, but somehow, because everything they've done so far has been bad. But <sighs> Hayden and Ewan are going to be back together. I can't. 
And we're gonna get more more Vader scenes in. And Ewan is the perfect age now. Like they returned to their story at the perfect time and I never watched the prequels in the theater. Obviously I was just a little bit older when I started watching them, but they were still very new. And now I have a big screen, so I'm gonna watch the Obi-Wan Kenobi series on the big screen and <laughs> I can't, I can't possibly wait. I can't, I can't wait. So many things that are personalized for me are coming soon. The Obi-Wan Kenobi series is going to feature Hayden again. The Loki series is coming. Like I'm going to be thriving in the next year or two media wise. It's like everything is perfectly tailored for me. I am finally getting what I deserve. All of my characters were so disrespected. And I'm finally getting what I deserve. I can't bloody wait. This was a rant. I understand. But I just had to comment because it just came out. I am so excited. So excited. Content for things that you maybe won't read yourself. But I, this is like the Clone Wars. There are so many moments where they actually use the Force on like the movies. I mean, he's going, Anakin is going after Obi-Wan. He needs to find a ship. Grabbing on tighter to the pole, he held his open palm downward, then sent a tremendous force push below, not to stop the lift, but to pro propel himself back up the shaft, keeping him ahead of the lift with sufficient speed for him to reorient himself and land, sprawled, atop the speeding car. He literally forced pushed himself. I... I have no words. I absolutely have no words. I love this so much. Cheeky bastard even when Obi-Wan is dying. He's literally just falling. And Anakin is just like, Hitchhikers usually stand on the platforms. <laughs> Anakin informed him, informed him and he swooped on the speeder near enough for Obi-Wan to grab on. A noble approach though gets the attention of passing traffic. <laughs> I love this idiot. I fucking love this idiot. Obi-Wan was too busy clawing his way into the passenger seat to offer a retort. He finally settled in next to Anakin. I almost lost, lost you there, the Padawan remarked. No kidding. What took you so long? I I love them. I love them. I mean, with great content, they're flying and Obi-Wan's like tasting bile and everything and he's like, Master, you know I've been flying since before I could walk, Anakin said with a sly grin. I'm very good at this. Just slow down, Obi-Wan instructed, in a voice that suggested the dignified Jedi Knight was about to throw up. I love these idiots so much, and if... He's like 35 now, right? Maybe 34. I think. Ish. 35, let's say 35. My chaos children are so good. If only I had a book with about the Clone Wars. I do have the audiobook though, so probably I'll listen to that when I'm done with in 1984 because I'm currently listening to that. Besides the point, this is an Attack of the Clones vlog. Why am I even... I have no idea. I'm just going to show you this because, I mean, you need to experience it. <laughs> but the word came out as... Ah, no, 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 no. I'm dying. I am dying. This is adding so much to the scene that I actually love in the movie as well. I, don't, I can't. I can't. Heartbreaking part. This heartbreaking in the movie, but I forgot how heartbreaking it is here. Why do I think you're going to be the death of me? Obi-Wan commented about the clamor. Don't say that, Master. Anakin replied seriously, and the intensity of his tone surprised Obi-Wan. You're the closest thing I have to a father. I love you, and I don't want to cause you pain. Then why don't you listen to me? I will, Anakin said eagerly. I will do better, I promise. He doesn't tell him he loves him in the movies, but it's oddly fitting. I love you and I don't want to cause you pain. I'm going to finish this chapter, then I'm going to go ahead and kill myself. Comment, but I have to, how they're actually like influencing entire rooms. Like, the room explodes into motion and Anakin, patting his hands in the air, imbuing his voice with the strength of the Force. Official business, go back to your drink. Drinks. The club resumed its previous atmosphere with conversations beginning again. They literally used the Force to just calm entire rooms of people down. 
and turn rooms of people down. You can't bloody compete with this era of the Jedi. I'm sorry you can't. You absolutely can't. Just not possible. Anakin is to totally being a whiny teenager right now. They're just leaving Coruscant to go on to go to Naboo, and he's just so pissed off at Obi Wan because he's following the rules of the Council. He's literally like, <laughs> Anakin didn't appreciate Padme speak of any gratitude at all towards Obi Wan. At least he didn't want Padme to elevate Obi, Obi Wan's importance in all of this above his own. <laughs> I mean, honey. <laughs> I mean, clearly he isn't perfect. None of these characters are, which is why we love them. <laughs> he was really a teenager. It really goes to show how much he actually changed and grew throughout the Clone Wars. He didn't actually go into any battle, real battle at this point, but... The Clone Wars, man. <clears throat> that was really something for his character. Now I'm just reminiscing. I have to. I mean, they're on Naboo now in Theed. And Padme's can't believe she's opening up to him that much. She's telling him how she wanted to have a family by now. And Anakin says, I feel things are going to happen in our generation that will change the galaxy in profound ways. A Jedi premonition? Padme kidded. Anakin laughed, a feeling. Well, you are going to change the galaxy for a couple decades, but definitely not in a good way. <laughs> so many little hints. Just so many little hints. I am having the best time. I'm on page 150 soon. I'm going to try and get to 200 and then pause for today and maybe read... <sighs> Maybe read afterwards. Merry Christmas, by the way. It's already past midnight, so Merry Christmas. I'm not sure if I'll read tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a day of Christmas movies and board games. They're walking now, and Padme literally, like... Padme Amidala had made a conscious and definitive choice. Public service or family? Some on Naboo juggled the two, but Padme had always known that such a dual role as wife, perhaps even mother, and senator would not do well for family or state. All of this just absolutely breaks my heart. I'm imagining a scenario where they're actually a family, and the whole, you know, headcanon that Luke would totally follow her in politics and be a mama's boy and Leia would be a badass Jedi trained by Anakin. And it depresses me so much that we never got even a glimpse of that because they would have been such a cool family. I'm getting emotional ahead of time. We already know I'm going to be a wreck in the Revenge of the Sith vlog, so this is besides the point. We're still on book two. Damn it. I'm living for all the extra scenes that aren't in the movie. Obi-Wan, now after he can't find the location of Kamino, goes to like a meditation chamber and he literally is in a trance and the vision of Anakin and Padme keeps popping up. He is sort of allowing it but also kind of panicking that Anakin is letting into his feelings. He, he literally can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Sorry. And he literally says, <clears throat> Obi-Wan pointedly reminded himself that the sooner he solved the mystery of Kamino, the mystery of who so desperately wanted Amidala dead, the sooner he could return to Anakin and offer the proper guidance. He literally can't stop thinking about the fact that Anakin is in emotional danger right now. And soon the part where they go back to Tatooine is coming and that's going to be interesting to say the least but this is where it starts to get emotional slowly i am waiting i just know that i'm comment i'm gonna comment a lot because this is the scene where it's not in the movie but it's some of it is in the deleted scene where they go to padme's house it's precious i'm gonna see if there's anything to read out because like her little two sisters or nieces nieces i think right just ran out 
and it's so cute. It's so cute. This is Anakin. Anakin, this is Ryu and Puya. The blush on the pair as they shyly said hello brought a burst of laughter from Padme and a smile to Anakin's face, though he was equally ill at ease as the two children. The girl's shyness lasted only as long as it took for them to notice a little droid rolling behind Anakin, trying to catch up. They all love R2. And R2-D2 seemed equally thrilled. I love R2-D2. The mother is coming. I'm gonna keep the clip going because the mother is coming. I'm probably gonna need to read out something else. Her sister Sola, not her mother. I'm sorry. You know, you're just looking at me reading, but fine. I'll just I'll restart the clip when there's something to read out. Expect a lot of updates from this chapter because I always remember this as such a cute part, and I'm so sad that it was deleted. Even the little snippet that was in the movie, it was so cute. I mean, this is such a cute scene, but also so awkward for them because neither of them actually wants to do anything at this point. Sola? Padme's sister? We stand. <laughs> She's the only one spewing facts around here. And like, I think that we, as a fandom, need to acknowledge Padme more. She's really, really established as a character here. A lot more than Leia was in the originals, in my opinion. I think there's a lot more of Padme and her life and her beliefs than there was of Leia. I love them both. But seriously, I feel like everyone's just sleeping on Padme. Read the books and then, and then let me know if she's not an interesting character because I absolutely adore her. And she was one of the, I mean, she was literally the mother, but everyone talks about Anakin in terms of the Skywalker family. Padme, Padme was the best. And she was so kind and good and generous and I love her and she would have been the best mother. I have a couple more chapters. I think I'm going to read the one where they kiss. And then maybe another chapter with Obi-Wan arriving on Kamino. Then I'm going to pause for today and finish it next time. It's just so easy to read. I'm literally flying through it. You sit down and you've already read 100 pages. So definitely a great book. This is getting so funny because the night where they talk... <laughs> she's literally commenting she's starting to like him a lot and by the way there was a beautiful scene where Anakin is standing in front of the sunset which we should have seen Hayden standing in front of a sunset I needed that as my lock screen but she's literally like starting to regret her outfit showing quite a bit of skin which is pretty much a comment that everyone has been making making like really since you're dressing up like a well something unseemly for her anyway and she's doubting it in the book she's literally starting to regret her outfit i love her i love her so much well the cat is making a mess that's awesome considering it's like 2 a.m <laughs>
we're back in the reading room. I haven't been able to be here for a while because my dad actually works here. So we're off to page 220. And Anakin and Padme are finally going to Tatooine. And we already know what happens on Tatooine. So if I cry, it's going to happen very soon. And then what's left is... Genosis and just the fight in Genosis and the fight with Dooku which is excellent in the book I remember how well it was described and the use of styles that they use different styles is so cool so we don't have that much left I am hoping to finish this well frankly today so that I can wrap up the vlog and read some other things until the end of 2020 it is currently I think the 28th maybe 27th Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we've got that much left, and we're having the best time. I am just loving this book. It's taking me a long time to read because I'm just not in the mood to read. I don't know why. It's not because I don't want to read this. It's because I'm not in the mood to read anything, so. <laughs> Slumpy mood, but when I do pick it up, I won't put it down, so. Let's eat our thing and keep going. They just came to the home of the Lars family and just after the entire book having the scenes where Shmi talks to Owen about Anakin, you actually feel their meeting so much harder than in the movie because you know that he's been hearing about Anakin probably for a decade and now they're finally meeting. <clears throat> I guess I'm your stepbrother, Owen said, his eyes never leaving the young Jedi of whom he had heard so very much. I had a feeling you might show up. Damn it, and now, now they have to tell Anakin that his mother's... <laughs> As I said, the addition of what Shmi was up to just makes this hurt a whole lot more. It's painful in the movie. It's physically painful in the book. I need a minute. It's obvious because Shmi was the original. She gave birth to him. She was full of the force. But the words hit Anakin like a stinging slap and he retreated from them back into himself, back into the force. He reached out, using his bond with his mother to try to somehow feel her presence in the Force. Then he shot to his feet. Where are you going? Owen asked. To find my mother, came the grim reply. He found her. He found her using the Force. And I think we don't talk about Shmi enough. I love her. And I'm getting very emotional. <laughs> let's just, let's, let's, let's just move on. I'm rambling a lot about this scene, but... Anakin actually got to meet them, and so did Padme. This makes the fact that Luke was given to them so much better, because they both met them, and they both know they're good people. It's actually beautiful that Luke, Luke was given to Owen and Beru. When Anakin says, you're going to have to stay here, these are good people, you'll be safe. Yes! I love the fact that Luke was given to them, because they loved loved his father and they met both of them and no wonder they were so careful with him and everything <sighs> we're fine we're absolutely fine if you ever doubted that the murder of the tuscans was unwarranted read the book please I didn't need the context, I really didn't. <clears throat> but <laughs> the corpses of the farmers are literally torn and battered outside their camp. And I didn't get to it yet, but I remember they kept me alive because they wanted to see how the human body worked, how the people worked. They tortured her. The only thing that kept her alive was the force and the thoughts of her son. The tension is building. 
I mean, it keeps cutting away to Obi-Wan, whom I love, but I think Genosis needs to take a backseat right now. It's actually so funny I have to read this out, and I mean, Obi-Wan's on Genosis now, and there's a scene where he kills some creatures that attack him that's not in the movie, and it's awesome, by the way, because he literally senses one that's behind him and just thrusts the lightsaber behind his back, but... He hit a bluff many feet down, but sprang away and fell again and again, half bouncing, half flying his way down to the dark plane. I'm imagining Obi-Wan Kenobi just, like, flying down a mountain to get to the bottom, bouncing like a ball. It's just a funny thought. Would have been interesting to see in the movie, that's for sure. Sorry, but that would have been very interesting to see in the movie, I think. Obi-Wan Kenobi bouncing down a cliff like a ball. I mean, hat flying, yeah, but it would have been funny. You are going to experience this with me because I can't be the only one to suffer. I'm so proud of you, Annie, so proud. I missed you so much. I missed you too, Mom, but we can talk later. Now I am complete, Shmi announced then. And she looked straight up, past Anakin, past the hole in the ceiling to the shining moon, it seemed. Somewhere deep inside, Anakin understood. Just stay with me, Mom, he pleaded, and he had to work very hard to keep the desperation out of his voice. I'm going to make you well again. Everything's going to be fine. I love, Shmi started to say, but then she went very still, and Anakin, could... Anakin saw the light leave her eyes. And before they kill her, they went through the effort of writing her perspective one last time. Murder me. Murder me immediately. Just read the books. R read the books. You're this far into a video about the prequels. Please read the books, I am begging you, because... Well, let's just, let's read this whole action because you don't see it in the movie for obvious reasons. I mean, not something you'd want to show on screen, but, uh, hang on, where is it? A third came at him, thrusting forth a spear, but Anakin lifted an empty hand and set up a wall of force energy as solid as, as, solid as stone. Soon none were standing against him, all trying to flee, but Anakin would have nothing of that. None of that. I'm sorry, I'm just too, too emotional. <laughs> he saw one group rush into a hut and reached out across the way to a large boulder in the distance. It flew to his call, soaring across the sand, smashing one fleeing Tuscan down and flying on. Anakin dropped it on the hut full of Tuscans, crushing them all. put his lightsaber away and walked to that hut where he gently and reverently scooped his mother's body into his arms. I need a minute. I genuinely need a minute. <laughs> and we're now in chapter 21. 273 we really don't have much left but <clears throat> I have no words and I'm reading this for the second time these are the best books in the Star Wars universe period a novelization is supposed to add to the movie not actually just copy it frame for frame like the force awakens so this is a book in and of itself, and I adore it. He's in the, like, workshop now, having a mental breakdown. And this is, I think, very indicative of why the Jedi were wrong, because she's consoling him and she's like, you're human. No, I'm a Jedi. 
they're expected to be more than human, which most of them aren't, and he especially isn't. He's like, what, 19, maybe 20 here? Of course he's not more than human yet. He's barely not a teenager anymore, and the fact that it's expected of him to not be human, I think explains a lot and why he's overly emotional. Yeah, but now that the emotional part is over, let's go back to Geonosis and I will check back in. There's not much to comment here, I think, if I remember correctly. Random thought, but a hundred Jedi came to Geonosis? Really? A hundred? I remember most of them are going to be slaughtered, so that sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, there are like over 10,000 Jedi in the galaxy, but a hundred came just to Geonosis and a lot of them are going to be killed. That's kind of depressing <laughs> yeah, but now the fight's gonna happen and then I'm gonna probably comment when it ends because I love the ending so much but first they need to fight like this entire genosis thing is so much shorter in the books I think it's like 30 pages whereas in the movie it's a large chunk of the movie when they're fighting off the creatures everything about the Jedi aside I absolutely love how they're all like together their togetherness and their love for their the other Jedi because it's like Mace winced when he spotted Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Padme sent flying into the air by the terrified and bucking Reek. He motioned to the other Jedi but he needn't have for those closest were already rushing towards their vulnerable companions throwing lightsabers to Anakin and Obi-Wan. When those two ignited their blades Anakin's green and Obi-Wan's blue and Padme came up between them a discarded blaster pistol in hand Mace breathed a bit easier. <laughs> Like, uh, Mace is a bitch, <laughs> but he actually cares. He is a master after all, and I love that about him. I love it. I love it when they work together. <laughs> I love all of them. I genuinely love all of them. The action of the Jedi being attuned to each other while they're, I mean, at the Force, while they're fighting. No number of battle, dro battle droids could hope to separate Mace and Obi-Wan. So perfect were their movements, so attuned were they to each other. Perfection, absolute perfection. Like, Mace Windu and Obi-Wan aren't Jedi that you usually see together, but how they just immediately work together in perfect unison. We love to see it, we really do. It's just a random thought, but I love how they're all kind of pairing up, like, clearly since they're the most well, not senior, but highest in the council, Yoda and Mace are always together. Like, they're a pair. I don't know, it's just so strange to me to think of them as a pair. <laughs> I guess they're maybe best friends in the council because you never see Yoda with Kiadi Mundi or Plo Koon as much, or Kid Festo. They're all, like, separate, but Yoda and Mace Windu are always together, just like Anakin and Obi-Wan, and I find that kind of cute actually that they are best friends of all the council i'm trying to remember in clone wars if any any of them pair off but they don't i think all the other masters don't really pair up ever maybe in legends but you know i can't remember right now i love how dooku is a master in his own right like i mean clearly he was very respected among the jedi and i mean he did train Qui Gon, but but like for a while, Obi-Wan and most of the Jedi were sword fighters, Count Dooku was a fencer, following an older fighting style, one more efficient, one more effective against weapons like lightsabers than against projectile weapons like blasters. The Jedi on the whole had abandoned that old fighting style, considering it almost irrelevant against the enemies of the present galaxy, but Dooku had always held stubbornly to it, considering it among the highest of fighting disciplines. This 80-year-old man is a master, and I love him. I mean, I don't. But I love him. He's cool. And man, I'm loving every second of this. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna finish it. When they're fighting and Anakin just cuts in with his lightsaber to save Obi-Wan. I mean, I'm pathetic. <laughs> but I love Anakin and Obi-Wan so much that every time one of them protects the other, I just want to cry. I'm gonna <laughs> be true to my promise. And maybe in this one, but possibly in the next one. Because it makes more sense to leave edits of Anakin and Obi-Wan that just absolutely rip my heart out so do remind me of that because I could forget I'll try not to but I thought 
that he actually uses the force here. Like, they use a lot more of the force here. I did you assume they used it in the movie, but considering it can't be as explained, he literally uses a force wall so Dooku hang, can't go to that side, and he's impressed, and he's like, you have unusual powers, young Padawan. Like, he's good, and we love our boy. How Obi-Wan's watching admiration as Anakin's working the two blades, but then... Ooh, Anakin fought hard to regain his fighting composure, uh, posture, but Dooku was relentless, thrusting repeatedly, keeping the young Padawan stumbling backward. And then he stopped suddenly, and almost in reflex, Anakin turned back on him, roaring and slashing hard. No! Obi-Wan cried. Dooku stabbed ahead and slashed out suddenly, intercepting not Anakin's green blade, but the Padawan's arm at the elbow. Half of Anakin's arm flew to the side, his hand still gripping the lightsaber. Anakin dropped to the ground, grabbing his serrated hand in agony. Mm -hmm. Baby boy. Well, he is gonna do it to his son, so I guess karma. <laughs> Does everyone, everyone loves seeing the might of Yoda? Like, when he shows up, you can just leave. You don't even have to try, you can just leave. But when they're fighting, and he's literally like, Fought well you have, my old Padawan, Yoda congratulated. And his lightsaber began to move out just a bit, forcing Dooku back. Him, Yoda, is just moving Dooku. An 83-year-old tall man. I love Yoda, and I'm so happy that we actually got to see him fighting. He was pretty much funny <laughs> in the originals, but Yoda. Finished it. My hat's off to R.A. Salvatore for being a magnificent writer and for breaking my heart. And this was everything. My reactions for the prequel books are literally like Phan Phantom Menace, Mwah. Attack of the Clones, beautiful. French of the Sith, <laughs> literally my favorite book of all time. Of all time. Absolutely no doubt. So when I opened the ending and it said, <sighs> Star Wars Shatterpoint by Matthew Stover, that's a... Uh, there are Clone Wars novels, I know this. I was going to listen to the audiobook of the Clone Wars movie. I want to read all of the Clone Wars novels, if I'm honest. Matthew Stover wrote more than one book. I love that man with all my heart. His writing is so beautiful that one sentence can absolutely just destroy you, punch you in the gut, wrench your heart out. So... Yeah, let's read all of the Clone Wars books. I'm gonna add it to my cart immediately and cry because I don't have all of them yet. I think these are, like, not following the show Clone Wars novels, I think. So there's even more content that I can consume. There are the novelizations of the Clone Wars, like the movie novelization, and then there's actual Clone Wars novels like this one, Shatterpoint. Matthew Stover is everything to me so I'll read it actually I'll read the Clone Wars novels not yet obviously the next thing I read will be Labyrinth of Evil and then Revenge of the Sith so I'm not sure if that will be one vlog or two Labyrinth of Evil is shorter and it has a little more crap in it so I might put those two together but also realistically Revenge of the Sith will be a lengthy lengthy vlog. I wouldn't be surprised if it was an hour long because I need to analyze like every single sentence in there. But this was incredible. It took a while because it was in a slump, but every time I pick this up, I love Star Wars even more. So, I finished it. I recommend it to absolutely everyone. Everyone, believe me, it's it elevates the movie to new levels and the story in general. So this was incredible, awesome, five stars. Clearly, who is shocked around here? And yes, this is it. Thank you for watching this lengthy, lengthy vlog. I hope you enjoyed. I didn't cry yet. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything else to say. This was everything really, really incredible. So I will see you in the next video.